Welcome to another episode of Making the Modeler. Uh, today I wanted to discuss uh, wall weathering techniques. Um, you know, uh, depending on where you're at in the country, uh, you know, uh, weather uh, affects different uh, materials, uh, different woods, you know, depending on where you live, uh, completely different. Uh, you know, the temperatures in a state like Vermont you know, during the winter, uh, compared to a state like Arizona, where it's pretty much hot all the time, uh, affects the materials around us in the outside world in many different ways. Um, today, I'm going to show you how uh, someone in the New England area would uh, handle weathering on the side of their structure. Okay, our first step is to decide what we want our structure to look like. You know, are we going for a, a newer build look? Uh, you know, a, a, a look of a structure that is constantly maintained and well taken care of? Are we looking for a structure that is weathered and beaten, but you know, every couple years we do throw a slap of paint on it? Or are we looking for something that is just never been touched, uh, you know, something that's wasting away, you know, to the uh, the effects of weathering. So what we have here is a piece of clapboard. This is a 332nd spacing clapboard, uh, traditionally used in O scale, uh, sometimes in S scale. I, I chose this piece of material just so you could kind of get an idea of what I'm doing. Um, let's look at the tools that we're going to use to do this. Now, I'm doing this weathering before I'm doing any priming, painting, or anything like that. Uh, that decision there goes back to what I was saying earlier as far as, you know, what approach you were looking at. This piece of wall, I want this side of this building to look as though it's been weathered and beaten and painted and weathered and beaten and painted, but nothing has ever been fixed. So all those little negative areas, all those bad things, have just remained and remained and gotten worse. As we attack this wall, you'll see all of that come together. Let's talk about the tools that I'm using today. Uh, today I'm using uh, three basic tools. I'm using a, using a standard X-Acto, uh, you know, sharp as you can get. Uh, sometimes for weathering, a dull X-Acto is even better, uh, but I'm going with a sharp one here. I'm using a simple razor blade just so that I can get under the clapboards and lift them, you know, as, uh, you know, something is painted and painted and painted but never sealed, all that moisture absorbs. So you're going to get some lifting. You're going to get some, you know, um, you know, breaking apart. And then all this is is sandpaper attached to a strip of wood. Um, I prefer it this way only because I can control the sandpaper a little bit more uh, than just using a sanding block or, you know, things like that. I can really get into the edges. So let's attack this wall. Okay, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take my razor blade and I'm going to find the clapboard. If you'll see here, it's running down. I like to run my fingernail down the clapboard to see where I'm going. Grab your clapboard. I'm obviously manipulating this, uh, you know, without paint, so I'm not too worried about messing anything up. Take the edge of your razor blade, try to find the bottom of that clapboard, and lift that just ever so much. Now, depending on the size of your wall, you may want to go all over the place. Just remember, you don't want to weather part of your wall. You want to weather all of your wall. As you can see here, I have weathered my wall uh, by lifting some of the boards. Uh, the next part that I like to do, not everybody likes to do this, but I like to do this. This is my favorite part. I like to take my standard X-Acto and I like to find a little few pieces of clapboard here and just kind of cut some out, uh, you know, completely remove it. Uh, you know, uh, especially here in New England, you know, you get a lot of times where everything just falls apart. Um, you know, during the winter, and, you know, to be honest, you'd like to call Bob Vila every five minutes to come fix your house. Uh, this here just kind of adds a little bit more detail. Brush that aside. Next, 
let's grab our sandpaper and kind of run across it here and there. This is gonna get rid of a lot of the, um, you know, real super new look. This is gonna beat it down even more. It's also gonna break apart naturally any of those pieces that we uh, cut out and any of those boards that we lifted up. It's gonna kind of bring, bring it to a whole new level. Let's see here. Lift a few more boards here. Cut that out. Look at that. That's what we're talking about. All right. Now that I've got a lot of the weathering done, our next step would be to prime this wall. So uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and prime that. Uh, you know, whenever I prime a wall, I, I use uh, honestly the cheapest primer I can find. Um, you know, uh, it, it helps me not overspray the wall because I don't wanna saturate it too much. Uh, this this piece of material here, I haven't braced, or, you know, we really haven't gotten into that. Um, but I'm gonna use, uh, you know, just a standard, uh, El Cheapo uh, Gray Primer Paint. I'm going to go ahead and prime this and, uh, you know, we'll see how that turns out. As you can see here, what I did was spot prime my wall. Um, the reason being is I want to be able to show that, uh, you know, there are certain areas in my wall that have just been, you know, painted and painted and painted and painted over other areas just didn't get quite the same treatment you know this is really meant to to show years and years of you know neglect uh you know uh, and honestly just poor maintenance um once your wall is dry from the primer then you can decide how far you want to go further as far as a second coat um you know if you know if you were going for something that you know was obviously beaten and worn down, but repainted every year, then I, what I would have done is went ahead and kept this, uh, you know, completely primered and, you know, no light spots, no variation in my, in my primer coat. So that way, when I went ahead and painted it, as I weathered the actual top coat of paint, I would still see the, the full coat of primer underneath. Where that's not the look I'm going for, that's not what I did. So next up, I'll go ahead and paint this the next color. I'm going to go with a, 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 an antique white. Um, you know, here in the Northeast, that's, you know, honestly what everything is painted. Um, you know, it's cheap, quick, fast. Um, so that, that just tends to be the look of New England. Okay, now as we let our wall dry... Uh, let's talk about, uh, you know, things we want to do with the wall. Um, sure, we weathered the wall, you know, we, we gave the wall some character, but every wall needs a sign, right? You know, every, every wall in your house has a picture on it, every wall in the world, you know, needs a sign, right? Especially if you're a commercial area. One thing to remember about signs is they're not hard. They're not hard, they're easy. Uh, and signs, you know, Sign signs are everywhere, right? Uh, you are on the internet. The best place to find your signs is the internet. Um, this is an example of three different sized signs that I've I've, I've sized out for this wall. Um, you know, I've got some old school advertising here. Uh, that's generally what I tend to model. So, um, you know, that's what I went for. What we're going to do here is we're going to take this. We're going to cut this out. Now, there are many different ways you can approach signs um, as far as how you want to weather the sign. Do you want this sign to look like a, uh, you know, a tin sign? Do you want this to look like a, you know, a, a poster, a paper poster that's been, uh, you know, glued onto the sign um, or onto, onto your uh, substrate, your wall? Um, there are many different ways that you can handle these. And, you know, depending on the look that you want, uh, you know, decides the, the way that you want to handle this. Uh, say, for instance, this one here. Um, if I want this to look like a, just a, a, a regular tin sign, um, well, actually, let's make this one look like a paper sign. 
So I want to clean up my edges. Uh, you know, they don't have to look all that great. Uh, you know, I, I would suggest using a ruler to get your edges off. But the way that we're going to work this sign into the wall means that we don't have to be too crazy with how neat we actually have the edges. Um, raggedy edges are actually a little better. So what we're going to do with this sign is take our trusty sandpaper, kind of rough up the front so it doesn't look, you know, brand new. We don't want the we don't want this to look like it just came out of the out of the printer, right? So we're going to take that, we're going to kind of take some of the color out of that, rough that up just a little bit just so it looks kind of old and faded. Then we're going to take this. I like to wiggle it a little little bit, kind of kind of beat it up a little bit. What we're going to do is we're going to work this into the clapboards on our wall. So I've got this beat up pretty good. Now you're going to want to flip this over and you're going to want to take a little bit of the rear side of this sign off. So like this, take this off. Point being is you want to thin this out. That way when it lays onto the wall, you know, it, it, it really appears as if it's become part of the wall. Again, remember, our our wall here is, uh, you know, old and battered and, and not so great. Next up, I'm going to water this sign down. Okay, so here is our Hellman's sign. If you'll notice, this is nice and thinned out around the edges. I've actually broken some of the edges off with the sandpaper, really to kind of give this a battered, weathered look. And this is now completely wet, nice and soaked. So we'll take our wall here, figure out where we want to put this. Let's put this right here. Now you want to start working from the top down. Now take your X-Acto, find your boards, and work that in. Sometimes you can actually use your thumbnail, but you want to do this while it's wet because you want this to work into and under the individual clapboards. If you'll notice there, it's slowly going in there. You want to take it easy. You don't have to go crazy. And remember, you can always come back with some more water not much, just a little bit to really work that in there. The wetter your your paper is, the easier it's going to work in there. Don't want it too wet though, because you don't want your wall warping from being too wet. There's nothing worse than getting a project completely done and it's all wet and nasty and warped up. Now, one thing I forgot to mention here is uh, this isn't the way that I handle it, but there are many modelers that will actually take that water that I, I wet this sign down with and mix it with glue. Just you know, standard, regular white glue, yellow glue, whatever you're using to construct your model. Um, I don't find that necessary because I tend to make my signs wet enough that they'll, once they dry, they, they adhere to the wood, they bond to the wood. Um, but, you know, it's, it's, it is a, a good idea to, you know, mix that uh, glue in there. You don't need much, um, you know, um, a couple dabs of glue, a couple dabs of water, you know, depending on how much you want to use, um, you really don't need a whole lot. So let's see here, let's work this in. Look at that. There we go, look at that. Coming right apart, look at that. All right, so that's our first sign. That is the sign. Okay, next up, <clears throat> we're going to do a tin sign. Let's see here. So a tin sign, we essentially want to look fairly new and we want it to look thick. Uh, the reason being, a lot of tin signs, it takes years for them to really deteriorate. 
obviously they can get a little sun faded, uh, you know, so we can, we can go back to the technique that we just used on our previous sign and, uh, you know, uh, lightening up the front with a little bit of sandpaper. But generally when I do a tin sign, I, I, I kind of like to leave it nice and fresh and new. Um, this here is uh, just a regular old nice clean tin sign. Again, you can use a straight edge uh, to, you know, clean up your, your edges because, uh, you know, a tin sign, you know, it's it's going to be nice and square and, and nice and edgy. Um, so then what we would do is we just uh, take our glue solution, our water solution, and then we would affix that right onto the wall, just as is. Work your edges in a little bit. You don't want it too crazy because uh, you do want uh, there to be the, um, you know, the appearance of, of thickness. You, know, you, you want to, to show that it's a, you know, it is in fact a, a tin sign. Um, once you've done that, that's all you're looking at. Uh, you know, that, that tin sign is, is essentially done. Um, air again, uh, you know, signs are, are, are really not that hard. Um, you know, it's all about how you want to do them and, and how you want to place them. I hope this has helped just a little bit uh, uh, explain how you can weather and add signage to the sides of your structures. Um, thanks for taking a look. Thanks for watching our video. And uh, remember, it's not about making the model, but it's about making the modeler.